Welcome. My name is Dennis Cusera. I am an MPEG Applications Engineer with Tektronix, and I will spend the next several minutes providing an overview of adaptive bitrate streaming followed by a Century ABR demonstration. What is adaptive bitrate streaming? It is an HTTP-based video streaming technology with the following advantages. First, it eliminates buffering problems by providing multiple versions of the same content encoded at multiple rates. And second, the client chooses the rate or profile based on available bandwidth. Also, ABR enables the ability to dynamically change the bandwidth as needed. The content is encoded in up to 16 different bit rates and resolutions. Each profile is broken into small fragments or chunks to ease switching from one profile to another. Before we can stream ABR video, we must first ingest the source content from RF, IP, or video on demand. Secondly, we need to reduce the bandwidth and replicate the streams by running the content through a transcoder. Then we can prepare the content for ABR delivery. The ABR content can have as little as four different bit rates or profiles, or up to 16. Here is an example from ABR using eight different bit rates or profiles. Notice that the resolution changes as the rate goes down. The receiving device will scale the content appropriately to match the client's display. Each of the different bit rate transport streams needs to be fragmented into small contiguous files. Then, optional digital rights management can be applied to each file. Apple HLS, seen in the second column, is just one of several approaches for ABR. In this case, 10 second chunks are specified for each small file. Finally, each of the varying files is gathered together with its appropriate manifest file and made available to the clients over the web. From the client's point of view, what actually happens when a client requests content? First is authentication. Second is checking for asset availability. If not available, within the edge cache, which is usually located near the client, a request is made back to the origin server for a copy, if available. Third, the manifest file associated with the request goes back to the client. Based upon an estimate of the available bandwidth, one of the many profiles is selected and a request is sent back to the edge cache. Finally, the first video fragment is sent back to the client for viewing as well as measuring the latency. At this point, the client either selects a second file from the same profile or a higher profile or lower profile depending on the available bandwidth. This repeats until the end of the content has been reached. Do problems occur in this process? Not frequently, but when they do occur, we need to be able to efficiently point to the device that is causing the problem. We do this by monitoring the input and output of each device in the network. For the ingest and transcode device, we monitor the input signal and transcoder with both quality of service and quality of experience metrics. Once the content is ready for streaming from the origin server and CDN, new metrics will be applied to ensure that the content described in the manifest file is available and correct. For quality control, we will use a sentry for monitoring the input and output of the transcoder. We will use the Sentry ABR for monitoring the output of the origin server as well as the CDN or caching server. When monitoring the origin server and CDN or caching server, the Sentry ABR will accept over 2,000 profiles or representations at a rate of up to 1 gigabit per second and keep a 60-day historical database of all measurements for each profile. Sentry ABR will automatically retrieve the manifest file and verify the contents against the defined profiles. It will also alert on any mismatch in bitrate, missing segments, or excessive latency. And now, the Sentry ABR demo. This will be divided into four parts. First, the configuration, followed by alerts, status, and finally, reports. All Sentry products are web server based. So all that we need is a PC and a browser to access the Sentry ABR. In this case, I'm using Google Chrome, but Firefox is available as well as other browsers. Within the Configure MPEG Input Settings menu, seen here, 
we need to assign the appropriate IP address, mask, gateway, as well as the bandwidth limitation that we want to apply for each origin server. This will keep the Sentry from using too much bandwidth from each origin server. Next, we need to provide the URL and name for each media set as we have seen it down here. Configure alerts can be set up for both the manifest as well as profile or representation. For the manifest, Sentry AVR supports alerts for parsing errors, HTTP errors, URL errors, and format or standard errors, meaning non Apple HLS or MPEG dash. When an alert is generated, the Sentry AVR can send a email message or an SNMP trap. An example we'll do here is a alert for bandwidth mismatch. We'll create an alert, select bandwidth mismatch. Anytime the fragment bandwidth goes above the manifest bitrate as defined more than 50% on we'll say all ports we will select them and anytime we have a 50 percent deviation on these we will send an SNMP trap to this specific IP address as well as send an email address to this user which is me with that I will save the alert and now this is set up For profile representation, uh, profiles or representation alerts, the Sentry ABR will measure specified limits against the fragment load time, fragment load latency, playlist parsing error, playlist HTTP error, media HTTP error, incomplete media fragment, and bandwidth mismanagement. So these are all available in representation or profile alerts, and as you saw, we've already created one of them using the create function for bandwidth mismatch. The system status page shows the status of the Sentry band, the status of the Sentry ABR hardware and software, a list of each origin server with its rate and limit as seen here as well as a summary of each media set being monitored, as seen down here. Selecting any one of these media sets will allow you to drill down to the status of each of the many profiles that make up that specific media set. And here I'll select Showtime 3, select that, and now we are looking at the last hour for all profiles or representations from the media set Showtime 3. Now a more detailed summary of the media set status is found within the reports media set status menu. Reports media set status. This page gives a great view into the makeup of each media set as well as any HTTP problems or alerts that may occur or have occurred. Notice the special colors and counts as I hover with a mouse over the colored boxes. Here we have an event count of 2,082. Those are successes as seen here in the table. And this is available for each of the many possible HTTP return codes. I'll go ahead and select one of the color blocks to see more detail about a specific HTTP code. For example, I'll look at one of the red blocks here. This is a 400 series error, where 400 series are client errors. So I'll select that one and we'll drill down to that specific uh, group called impaired 401, 404s and 40 and 302s. 
And here we can see the famous 404 not found error code, which has occurred many times over the last one hour over many of the different representations or profiles that make up this media set. Now after selecting one of the many media sets, you'll be redirected to the media set report where we're at right now. From here you can see over time all of the statistics for each profile, as well as graphical information including min, mean, and max plots. Selecting one or more of these profiles, followed by selecting the graph selection, will allow you to compare the details of each profile. For example, I'll choose the highest and lowest profiles. So here we have statistics in the graphs. I'll unselect the rest so I have the lowest bit rate and the highest bit rate. And at this point we can see that the headroom for both the lowest and the highest profile is relatively the same, approximately 10 seconds. Whereas the load time for the, uh, the lower bandwidth obviously takes a lot less time in seconds because it's smaller fragments and the larger bandwidth consumption takes a little bit longer to load. Load latency is similar across the board whereas load bitrate obviously the one with the higher quality takes a lot more megabits to load than the one with the least amount. And then the fragment size as you would expect the, uh, the lower bandwidth has less number of fragments and then the larger one with using, consuming more bandwidth uh, uses more megabytes. Finally, we'll step into the Report Program Statistics menu. I'll scroll back up, go to Reports and Program Statistics. Within here, we can display all or a subset of the many different profiles and measurements. Predefined selections, as we see here, make generating reports a one-button operation. So just simply selecting here will give us, based on a predefined report, information we have set up. And here we have all of the information for all of the programs, which looks like quite a large number of individual programs as well as we can go through the create and select specifically the measurements that we want to look at. I'll choose three, size, load time, and latency. Four, either all or a subset of programs. I'll choose all, generate report over the last hour or let's make it the last five minutes. Generate report. And below we should have all of the program statistics for every single one of the programs that we have, which is the representations all within the different media sets. And then the different measurements that we had selected earlier. The three were size duration, load time, and lo latency. So we have those all listed here. I have to pan to the right to see the rest of them. And we can also export them as a common delimited format file for Excel and other applications to look at. This concludes our introduction to ABR and the Century ABR demo. For more information on the Century ABR, please see the following URL. Thank you.